know, this is Big G here doing up with Fashion Icon Magazine. We're doing it right here at the Blackbird Artist Studios here in Bloomfield, New Jersey, where Stephen Green is displaying his artwork. It's really hot work, yo. You got to come out and check this out. Right here, I'm standing here with Prophet Kwame, who is a minister of the church here. So, Prophet, tell us, how do you like the art here, man? Oh, man, it's, it's amazing, man. I mean, Elder Steve, his artwork has grown tremendously over the years. And it's just a blessing to see someone's vision come into manifestation, and he only can go up from here. Wow. So how long have you known Steve? I mean, how long have you been knowing him and seeing his work? And inside of the years you've known him, how, how has his work affect you? Well, I have known Elder Steve, I would say, since 2006, since I joined the ministry. But his artwork, it affected me in a positive way where, I mean, you see struggle in his artwork. You see faith. You see hope. You see strength. And it ministers because he draws from a spiritual point of view. And it just draws your attention and it just grabs you. Wow, wow, wow. So that's, that's deep because I'm looking around I see a lot of work I have never seen before. And I've known, you know, Elder Steve for quite some time. And a lot of his work shows a lot of Afro Afrocentric in it, a lot of history, and his his work is very phenomenal. But you as a person, like, how do you feel when you see certain different artwork out here in society opposed to seeing Steve's work here in the gallery and it's not displayed out there in society where it should be so where other people can see it? Well, it's the environment that we live in. And that's the vision that we have for the city of Newark, which we're from, and the city of Bloomfield, which the church is located. Whereas, though, we want to advance the city in arts because we're going to change the world through arts. And we just want to bring that culture of arts, that excellence, that standard. And we just want to present it to the world and not only present it to the world, but get others involved, get the community involved, get the youth involved, get parents involved. Just like Elder Steve, he did a project, a mural, at Brick Avon Academy. And... He got the community involved. He got the school children involved. And it was just a big project, but he brings unity in his artwork. There's a unity that's involved when Elder Steve does his artwork. Wow, wow. So <clears throat> it's safe to say that this brother is going to be moving up. What? Moving up. Moving up. Taking over the world, Elder Steve Green. <laughs> All right. Well, this is Joe. This is Big G doing it up here. Again, we had the Blackbird. Artist Studios in Bloomfield, New Jersey. We did it up here with my man, Prophet Kwame. I'm loving the bow tie. My man, my man be dressing, y'all. He be, he be putting it on. But we're going to have more interviews, more artwork showing on, on the video. So check it out. Stay tuned. We're out. Peace. Fashion Icon Entertainment TV. We're down here at Blackbird Artist Studios where Stephen Green is hosting some of his artwork. It's phenomenal work, y'all. So if you didn't, if you missed out, you missed out on the treat. But right now we're standing here with the lovely Pastor Pinnell, minister or pastor, pastor, pastor now, Pastor Pinnell, who is a mother of four beautiful daughters. She also has a book out. Tell us about this book you got going on. 
Uh, the name of the book is Bad Dreams Are Not Allowed, and I'm um, very proud is my first, um, I guess you could say, my baby as far as writing goals. Um, I'm very proud to have held it in my hand, actually, because it was a work in progress for about a year. And so uh, I'm very excited about the project. The book deals with my now a five-year-old, but she was three years old at the time, Tatiana, and she was having nightmares. And as a mother, I felt powerless because I couldn't go into her dreams, obviously. And so we had to come up with ways that we can make her feel powerful enough to fight against bad dreams. Hence, we practice some things um, in the book talking about how bad dreams are afraid of kids who brush their teeth or bad dreams are afraid of kids who eat their vegetables. So it's a fun way to empower kids. So um, as I go out to school visits, I'm enjoying myself kids are really opening up and just talking because it's a, a book that causes kids to talk so I'm most proud of that Wow that's 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 phenomenal right there so how did you come up with the title I came up with the title because of what was taking place and again um, just to empower her you say bad dreams are not allowed. So you're telling bad dreams you're not allowed you know in other words I don't have to accept you I'm going to practice things to combat having bad dreams and so that's how I came up with the title wow you know I seen I seen the book and I read some of the book online the now who designed the cover of your book because we got a surprise for y'all who designed the book the cover of your book well I can't draw and so um I designed the cover of the book. I just gave the artist, Steve Green, my vision as far as what I envisioned, as far as um, the cover of the book, how I wanted it to play out. And immediately when he heard what I wanted to co the cover to look like, he picked it up and he just brought it forth. He brought the vision to fruition. So it was a blessing that he being that artist um, just came right out with it. So it was powerful. Wow, and it's a good book. I believe we can find that book on Amazon, amazon.com. Uh, the book is on Amazon.com right now. It's available in both ebook form and also um, paperback. And uh, so if you have a Kindle, if you have an iPad, whatever your device is, download it and um, just enjoy yourself. Have a field day with your kids because you won't be disappointed, neither will your kids. Now, what you being a mother for, and, and obviously you have to be conscious of what children read now because there's so much stuff out there that kids can just pick up anything and read it in the stores and supermarkets on the street and signs of what books that you you read in your life that influenced you the most um i was a big fan of the Berestain bears um i really like lee and low books um i was definitely um just books period anything that just uh, drew me in with the pictures being bright, um, pop-up books, um, different books about animals, books about um, true freedom fighters and uh, all of the historical uh, figures in today's time and even back then. But I always loved reading and I just found myself in an entirely different world when I went into and dived into a book. So reading has always been something I loved, especially when I was interested in reading it. So when I came up with the book idea, I wanted to make sure that kids were not only um, interested in the book, but also learning from the book. So in other words, I wanted to give them something outside of uh, just entertainment. I wanted them to grasp something that kids, you do need to practice healthy habits during the day in order to sleep better at night. Um, it's a, it's a well-known proven fact that a child who practices healthy habits uh, during their day, they will rest better at night who now we all in and now you know in time we have influences in our life that influence us to do certain things whether bad or good who are some of the influences in your life today that you look up to that keep you on a straight and narrow and to be a better parent a better better minister and a better mother I would have to definitely say, um, first and foremost, Yahweh, because Yahweh is the reason that I am. I'm very thankful to Yahweh for who he made me to be, who he's called me to be, and my obedience to become who he's called me to be. Also, uh, my husband is a very great influence in my life because even before we were married, he was just a great friend. Um, always very nurturing in my ministry as a person, as a friend, and now as my husband. And then I would definitely say I'm inspired by my children because they are, they're just the most loving people I've ever 
<laughs> encountered, honestly. They are very loving. They're very uh, honest. They will... Um, they're like my biggest promoters, you know, they, they're my management team. Um, then Dr. Pastor Chris says that mighty powerful woman in the land. Um, I definitely look up to her as my big sister, as a mentor, um, just always looking to cultivate the greater. And so uh, Bet Hashem Yahweh as a whole, this is my family. I'm very proud to be a part of this ministry, very proud to serve and labor with powerful people. Are we going to switch gears? Cause I'm going to jump into some other things. So you see, Pastor Pasha not only is an a inspiring author and a mother, she also is a poet and a singer. So, and if you didn't see it, for those of you who didn't see it, I have one of her poems that she's done. I videotaped uh, a couple of years ago. I will recirculate it again. But tell us about some of your poems because I know one of your poems that you have recited that is very dear to me and it talks about your dad. Tell us about that. Um, that was a very trying time in my life. Uh, the poem about my dad is Daddy's Girl, and it deals a lot with everything that I had to go through uh, when my father passed away. Uh, my dad wasn't always in my life as the figure he should have been, but regardless, I still loved him. Um, and when my dad passed away, I was his next of kin, so it was very hard. I was about 19 years old. Um, I was in school, but everything just fell down on me, and I didn't have anybody to turn to. Um, um, he didn't have a wife, so they turned to me. So it was like, what do we do? Um, my father passed away, they called me. And I'm like, what am I going to do? Like, how am I going to bury someone? How? And so Yahweh came through for me. And the poem Daddy's Girl is like, it's just, it's every expression, everything I felt at that time, everything I went through, um, answered prayer because I got to pray with my dad before he passed away and he received Yahshua in his heart. So it blessed me to know that he was going to live again. Yeah, so those of you don't know, I'm going to I'm gonna put that poem up so you guys can see it because that poem is very deep, it's very dear to me, and, and it's truth because some of the things she talk about, we all go through it. We all go through it, and we have somebody in our family that died of some of this, this illness that she's talking about. So, pa Pastor, thank you for coming in and letting us interview you. It was a pleasure meeting you, and I've been knowing her for years, but, <laughs> yo, those of y'all know, she jokes on me all the time. This is my friend. She jokes on me all the time. But thank you so much. I'm from Ben Hashim Yahweh, and you're watching Fashion Icon Entertainment TV. Fashion Icon Entertainment TV. We're down here at the Blackbird Artist Studios where Stephen Green is showing us some of his art. And let me tell you, y'all, we got a lot of celebrities up in the building right here. We got my girl, Kathy Stanley. What's going on, Kathy? Hey, how you doing? Kat, for those of you who don't know, Kathy did my first cover in my magazine, right? So, Kathy, you know, you're a world-renowned director doing film. So what's going on? What's, what's, what, what we got to see? What, what is, when, when are you going to see the next big project? Well, right now we're working on a suspense film called Clip Wings, They Do Fly. It's supposed to come out next year, 2014. We're releasing to different film festivals in hopes that it gets picked up and hits the, the big screen. Now, uh, you know I'm going to ask, who's some of the big names you got in this here film? We have uh, Frankie Faison in it, Usman Sharif, um, J.D. Williams, who plays Bodie in The Wire. Um, a, a couple couple big name people that we have, more people coming out. Um, a, a whole bunch of people working behind the scenes. You know, we have people from Spike Lee's camp working on it. It's, it's just, it's huge. It's huge. The doors are definitely opening. Wow, that's great. So you're going to be doing your big thing. So that means I'm going to see you on the red carpet in Hollywood? Oh, definitely. Most definitely. Uh-huh, she's going to be on the red carpet. She's going to forget about us little people down here now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Everybody's little to me. Everybody's big. Everybody's major. Uh, well, thank you for coming out. 
Thank you for giving us the interview. All right, so this is Captain Stanley. This is Big G, Fashion Icon Entertainment TV. Peace, we out. This is Captain Stanley here at Blackbird Studios in Bloomfield, New Jersey, representing artist Steve Green, making big moves, making it happen. Fashion Icon Entertainment TV, and I'm standing here with the lovely Dr. Apostle Chris Purnell. Hi, my brother. Hello, hello, everyone. Um, many blessings and much prosperity. I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great right now. Yeah, so you came out to Steve Green's art show. How do you like the show? Phenomenal. I've known Steve Green for over, at this point, about 15 years or so, and his pieces are just so vivid and vibrant, and they speak to your heart. They, like, reach in, they grab you, and so whenever he has an opportunity to show his work and I can celebrate and support, I'm there. So let's jump gears. We're going to talk about you a little bit. Uh, not too long ago, you released a book called uh, Letters to My People. Tell us about that book. Well, you know... I got the book, the inspiration for the book, actually, when I was still doing a, a graduate program at Columbia. And I was sitting in class. It's about social entrepreneurship, about, you know, starting business ventures with a social purpose and goal in mind. And the moment of inspiration, it hit me. And, and I got the title, Letters to My People, Inspirational Poems, Essays, and Quotes. And that eventually became Inspirational Poems, Essays, and affirm Affirmations. But I wanted to be able to share with people stories, anecdotes, um, wisdom that could be used to spark a movement in their life, that could be used to encourage, that could say, look, I have had much prosperity, I've had many blessings, but they have come by way of struggle. So don't be afraid of the battle, but be battle-tested. Don't be weary in your well-doing. But um, every so often you need somebody to pour back into you, sow into you. So that's what the book is, whether you read an essay, whether you pick up a poem, or whether you read um, an affirmation. It's, it's there just to minister to you, to make you whole and well. Well, let's jump a little bit more because I want to talk about, I've known this beautiful person for, wow, about 15 years? 15 years. And I've known her since she went off to college to Princeton. She has a, a whole lot under her belt. She is not only an author, she is not only a doctor of medicine, but she is also a dancer. She is also a poet. She is also a singer. She leads the praise and she's the leader of the praise and worship ensemble here at the church. And she's a minister. How do you balance your life with all of that going on? It's the Christ in me. <laughs> you know, it's the Christ in me. It's just the Christ glow. And what makes a person thrive, what makes a person tick is being true and being authentic to their purpose and their calling. And so whatever I do, I tell people, look, I'm a renaissance woman, meaning that I hope to be able to do it all and to be well-rounded, whether it's the arts, whether it's my profession, whether it's my calling. And through it all, the main goal is to uplift. The main goal is to make people whole and to make people well. So ministry is that complement to medicine, right? I like to call it health and healing arts. 
health and healing arts. So whether I'm, you know, I do a lot of policy work in the field of public health and preventive medicine. So whether I'm on a project, if I get a moment of inspiration, I was like, oh, y'all, just gave me something in the spirit. I want to write that down, whether that's going to become a piece, um, a poetry piece, or whether that's going to become, you know, the substance of a new essay, or whether that's going to become a lyric or a hook, you know, however, however the spirit moves me at that moment. So that's what I tell people. Whenever you get inspiration, use it. And that's how I'm able to juggle these different things that at first glance may seem to be totally separate, but truly they're all congruent and they just work together and complement. Now, I, I, I want to I wanna talk about ministry for a minute because I remember some years ago you ministered and I was there and one, I don't remember the title of your word, but she said something that always stuck with me. It said, pick up your steros and keep moving, meaning pick up your cross pick up and I it's funny because I pray for my sister-in-law is the first time I pray for anybody in four years and I I got that word and gave it to her what does that mean to you as a person my brother, I'm, I'm so glad that you brought that up because actually Bishop was ministering a word last night and he gave the, the vivid imagery that Christ, the Messiah, Yahshua, he fell with his cross, mm. right? But he got back up. Mm. He got back up. And so it's to say that each person will have a struggle. Each person may have a burden. It may have an adversity, something that you have to go through, but that burden doesn't have to slay you. That giant doesn't doesn't have to slay you. Uh, otherwise, that, that struggle comes to perfect you. So when it's like one, pick up your cross, meaning pick up whatever your battle is and then hoist it up to the Heavenly Father. Give it over and free yourself from that stronghold and know that that's only come to perfect you because the scripture says that iron sharpens iron. So that battle comes to perfect you. And in the same token, once you've conquered it, don't stay on the cross because right Christ he was resurrected he was he, he he ascended to his father in heaven so don't stay on the cross don't stay in your struggle don't stay in your oppression go through your battle go through your warfare and on the other side of that is 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 your your land of your milk and honey and then another struggle is going to come but each struggle comes for promotion and and not to not to do you in not to do you under well it's a great having this renaissance woman she is Definitely cracking the ceiling, the glass ceiling, y'all. Crack, crack. <laughs> but thank you, Dr. Apostle Chris, for having us. And we look forward to hearing more from you. And keep it, if you're on Facebook, you're not following her on Facebook, please, or Twitter. Yes, follow her because she puts a lot of information out there. And for all y'all don't know, you get a lot of free information that some doctors will charge you. <laughs> so keep it locked. Right here, Fashion Icon Entertainment TV, this is Big G, we out, peace.
going on? This is Big G doing it up here at Fashion Icon Entertainment TV. I'm here at Blackbird uh, Artist TV Artist Studio, excuse me, where Stephen Green is showing off some of his artwork. Right now, we're standing here with my man Superman, the rap artist, the the wrestler, the basketball player. What's going on, brother? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm, hey, he's, look, he's talking also. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? So what's happening, man? Um, I hear you doing some music now. What's going on with that? Yeah, uh, big things, big things. So I'm actually talking to a couple of producers, uh, some people who work with Daddy Yankee and Pitbull, um, Sony. Um, yeah, we're trying to push it out, trying to trying to push it out. I got a couple singles out, and we're working on the album now. Oh, okay. Now, I heard uh, one of the things you guys did, you did a collaboration with somebody else, a young cat is doing a production named King Leo, who also goes here in the ministry. And I put something out called No More Lies. Tell me, tell me a little bit about that song. Uh, yeah, King Leo actually is my little brother. I love that man. Uh, um, yeah, uh, we, uh, you know, we came, we came together, and I told him, I said, I had a vision. You know I'm saying I had a vision for a track, and he saw my vision too, and he, he basically put it out in music, and you know, I came with the words, and we basically, you know, it's basically uh, a Christian slash, uh, slash just truth about, about everything, about the name, about Christian and religion, about life in general. It's like, you know, everybody tired of lies. You know, we're hearing some truth out there, so. Oh, great, great. That's 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 cool. So, man, I, I'm looking forward to hearing your album, brother. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and seeing you on the court in the pros. All right? Yo, Big Superman right here, yo. This is Big G signing off right here at Fashion Icon Entertainment TV. Peace. Big Wicky out of the Superman. That's Big Easy. You are part of something in the squad, Bashan. And you watching Fashion Icon Entertainment TV. Peace. Yo, this is Big G doing it up here, Fashion Icon Entertainment TV. I'm down here at the Blackbird Artist Studios with my man, Elder Steven Green. What's up, Steve? Elder Steve. Elder Steve. So tell us about some of your work that you got going on here. Uh, a lot of the work that you see are recent works, uh, which was created this year. Um, they're, they're colorful. They're vibrant. Um, they're a reflection of, um, you know, my vision as in art in terms of uh, where I'm going and you know what I want to do and what I aspire to be as an artist um, so um, it's different um, it's, it's definitely unique and uh, I, I believe that the art is really touching and, and uh, uh, connecting with people oh, great great so a lot of my viewers because I've seen you post some paintings on Facebook so a lot of times I tag, you know, or share your paintings on my page, and I have a lot of viewers that's not on your page and they see your work who really like your work. But I'm going to ask you, when did you start painting? <laughs> I've been painting all my life, man. Um, I started when I was real little. Uh, and, uh, you know, at that time it was just more so like a hobby. I got serious about art when I got into high school. And that was because of my brother. He was a graffiti artist, and uh, he was doing these, like, crazy walls. And uh, when I got into high school, he was going to college. He went to the North School of Fine and Industrial Arts. And he would come back with, with books of just, like, graffiti and tags and these nice burners. And I was like, yo, you got to teach me how to rock letters, man. So he took me under his wing, and we started doing walls together. Uh, we we uh, hooked up with a crew of other artists in the area, and uh, we called ourselves Top Writers Around. So we would go around and just tagging up everything and, and doing these nice walls and everything, you know. And uh, that's, that's pretty much how I got started. From graffiti, it introduced me to other art forms. Uh, because uh, once I got into graffiti and I was making money from it, uh, because we would do jackets, shirts, and so forth, I said, hey, this is what I want to do as a career. Uh, so I was fortunate to have an art uh, teacher who encouraged it. You know, she didn't discourage my graffiti. She encouraged it. And because of that, um, it led me into other art forms like graphic design, painting, drawing, and the fine art side. And so uh, you, if you look at my work, a lot of the elements of graffiti in, in, in terms of style and technique is still there. The influence is still there. You know, and, and it's something that I've taken with me uh, from those years and I still apply to, uh, to my work today. So did you, you, your teacher influenced you, your brother influenced you when you was growing up in art. Did you have any, uh, like, circular teaching, like any uh, colleges? Did you go to any college and learn how to paint? Absolutely. After high school, I went to the Art Institute of Philadelphia, where I got my uh, degree in um, uh, advertising and graphic design. 
From there, I started working in New York for an advertising firm, um, doing graphic design. And uh, after that, um, I started freelancing. And um, the freelance, my freelance career led me into illustration work, uh, logo design, uh, pamphlets, brochures, flyers, you name it. You know, uh, I was doing it. Um, but even in those years, my painting, uh, my love for painting still grew. So it was something in me that, that kept me painting. And that's what got me here today. You know, um, it was maybe like five, six, seven years ago where I said, yeah, hey, you know what? I'm going to go full-fledged, you know, as a fine artist uh, because this is actually what I love to do. And this is actually in my, in my heart to do it. Wow, wow. So uh, one of the questions I, I want to ask you, now, I looked at, I've known you for quite a number of years. I, is, well, I've known this man for about a good 17 years. Yeah. Uh, it's, been it's been a long time, man. Our kids grew up together. Yeah. But I want to know, what is your inspiration? Like, what inspired you? Like, when you home and you in your studio, what inspired you to paint a Pacific painting? Well, I, I view painting the same way I view prayer. You know, you, you may go into uh, prayer asking the Heavenly Father for a certain thing. But then as you're praying, your, your prayer is led into a totally different area, you know, and, and, and that's what happens when you're led by the Spirit. So when I paint, um, sometimes I might have an idea in mind, sometimes not. But it's, it's, it's just I sit myself down and I view it as worship. I view it as my time to release what's in me and I let it happen. You know, I think um, Michael Jackson said it best when Martin Bashir asked him, well, well how did you come up with Billie Jean? And all he did was like this. <laughs> you know, you let it come down. You know, you let it happen. You know, and, and a lot of times, in my case, the art just creates itself. Now, I, I've, I've looked at a lot of your paintings, which is very, very phenomenal. I, you know, I can't afford you right now. I ain't got no money. <laughs> but... I've noticed that a lot of your paintings have scriptures in them. Why do you put scripture in your paintings? A um, couple reasons. Uh, it might have been a, a, a scripture I've been meditating on while I was doing the painting. Um, sometimes, um, you know, before I begin the painting, I have a certain scripture in mind that I want to base the painting on. Or it could be an afterthought of how I feel about the painting when it's done. You know, but... Um, the majority of the work that I do, it is, it is based uh, um, in the spirit, meaning that I get something in the spirit, you know. Um, and what, what, what conveys that is usually the scripture. So, so I get something in the spirit and I have something to lean on because I know the scriptures. I know the Bible, you know. So I make that correlation. I make that relation. And what I've always wanted to do was make the bridge between the spirit and the natural, you know, through my artwork. Great. So, what is the purpose of art? Do you believe art has a purpose? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Art does have a purpose. I, I believe art has the power to change the world. Um, I believe that art has a power uh, that connects you with who you are and who you want to be. Art inspires, you know. Uh, to me, art is life and, and art is ministry. So, so, I surround myself with art all the time, whether I'm painting or looking at art. Because it, it feeds me, you know, it feeds it feeds something in my soul and spirit, and I believe um, that very notion that of art being able to to pull something out of you or deposit something in you is is a very powerful concept that um, I believe can change people's lives. Wow! Now I, I believe we touched on this a, a, a while a few minutes ago, but did you paint? Uh, preferred subject like say like if uh, I came to you and I say I want a painting of this particular item or this particular statue do you paint things of that nature yeah absolutely I've, I've had people come and um, ask me to remake a certain painting you know um, I've asked people uh, or people have asked me to paint uh, portraits uh, of their children or wives or husbands or whatever um, I I don't. I believe there's nothing that I can't paint, or, or nothing that I can't recreate. Um, but for the most part, um, when people come to me, they they trust my judgment, you know, and um, they trust that um, 
whatever they ask me to do, I'm going to give not only what they've asked me, but a part of me as well. So um, you may ask me to do a picture of the Sistine Chapel. Well, I'm going to put my spin on it in a way, you know, to let you know that it came from me and it's an original work. Yeah. Well, let's jump. Let's jump over a, a little hurdles here, and we're gonna we're gonna touch on some other subjects. Now, for those who don't know, uh, Stephen Green, which I know him as Elder Steve, Pastor Steve, Bishop Steve. Um, he's not only a, a phenomenal painter, but he also is a minister of the church. He also is a father and a husband. So tell me about your, how do you separate your painting or working as a painter and your ministry and family life? How do you separate the three and then bring those three together as one? Well, um, I believe I matured in that sense uh, because it used to be a time where I viewed it all as separate, but now I view it all as one, you know. Um, painting and art is a part of me. It's what I am. It's who I am, you know. So uh, when you describe me as a father, that's what I am. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm an artist, you know. There is no, um, there is no separation and there is no gray area. So I all clump it all into one, one big pot. And that's who I am. That's what I am. You know, yeah, I have different gifts. I have different functions, but we all do. You know, you could be an uncle. You could be a brother. You could be a husband. You can be uh, a, a worker or whatever, you know, whatever your title is on, on your job, an interviewer, you know. But uh, all those things make up who you are. Being a part an artist is just a part of who I am, you know. And, and what I've learned over the years is that people are, are, are very multi-dimensional you know you just can't pigeon people into one thing because there's so much more and and that's um what i like to also convey in my artwork as well well i got one more question see not only is this man a, an artist he's not only is a minister but did y'all know that this man also plays the bass plays the keyboard so tell us a little bit about that. You, I mean, you play the bass in, in your church. You play the keyboard in your church. You're part of a, a praise and worship ensemble, which I know very well that's, that's uh, flourishing, and you've done a lot of events. How do you view that also when you're doing music to art? Because I know you're a great jazz lover, too, and, and you love uh, house music. So how do you put all that together? Like, how do you, how do you like... You, you feel what I'm saying? Like, because you, 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 in one minute you're playing the bass, and then the next minute you're, you're painting, and then you might be, while you're painting, you're listening to jazz or you're listening to house music. So how do you bring that together and say, oh, this is all one? You bring it together by faith. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the only way, that's the only way to explain it. And, um, again, it just goes to show how multidimensional people can be. You know, yes, I'm an artist. I'm a musician as well. I'm a father. I got I got all these things in my life that I have to uh, contend with and I have to um, give credence to. You know, so so being a musician and being an artist, you know, I don't see the conflict in it, or or I don't see where they bump this. There, there used to be a time where I did was like, oh, I got to spend more time here. How can I be a musician if I'm a painter? How can I be a painter if I'm a musician? No, I just let it happen. You know, and and I let my faith speak for myself. Well, hold, hold on. So, so come here, come here, come here, come here. Listen, look what we got here. Look, we got, we got little C right here. There's a, there's little C right there. This is Elijah right here. Elijah, what's up, man? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just uh, trying to, trying to, trying to get on, trying to get on the track. So.